Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today, I'm going to show you how to create a default button, how to press a button on your form by using the Enter key. So you can create a button on your form, and no matter where you are on the form, any other field, you press Enter, and it pushes that button. That's called a default button. I'm also going to show you how to create a cancel button, which you can press Escape to get. Today's question comes from Laurel in Kirkland, Washington, one of my silver members. Laurel says, I've got a data entry form where I enter a bunch of customer information, but there are a ton of fields on it, and sometimes I only have to enter a few things. I like to skip the next 50 or so fields. Wow, 50, that's a lot. Is there any way I can move to a blank new record without having to stop and grab my mouse? I've looked for a keyboard shortcut, but I can't find one. Well, first, there is a keyboard shortcut you can use to move up and down through records. But if you're like me, I can ne never remember those keyboard shortcuts unless I use them all the time. In fact, I tried doing a video series on keyboard shortcuts, but even I don't remember them all. <laughs> so I kind of stopped doing that. But let's say you're in your database. This is my tech help free template. You can get a free copy of this off my website if you want to. And let's say this is your customer form. Okay, and you got a whole bunch of stuff on here to fill out. Let's, in fact, let's just simplify this a little bit. I am going to delete all of this stuff. All right, we're just going to make this nice and easy. And let's say that you have to, you know, you got all this information you can enter, but let's say you just did a trade show and you're literally just running down typing in first name, last name, email, next, first name, last name, email, next, and so on. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is you could just build a simple little continuous form, right? Like this guy that's got just the fields you need, right? You go first name, last name, email, done. Next record, first name, last name, email, done. But if you still want to work with this form, we can do that. Now, the keyboard shortcut that I mentioned a minute ago, okay? You can go control page up and control page down to move through records if you want to remember that, okay? So if you're on the last record, and you're typing something in, right? Typing in another person. If you press control page up, it's gonna move to the next blank record. All right, so that's one thing you can do. Plus, if you're working with other end users, you got a you know, bunch of people doing data entry for you, they're not gonna remember the keyboard shortcut. So let's give them a button that they can have right here. Okay, so design view, we're gonna make a button and all that button's gonna do is go to a new blank record. Because if you're in the middle of entering a record and you move to a new blank record, it's gonna save that record that you have a lot of newbies think that you gotta find a save button or something. In fact, I got a whole separate video on that because some people get confused. They think it's like Excel, right? Where if you don't save the file, then you lose the information. But no, in Access, if you type in a bunch of stuff and you go to another record, that stuff is saved. So, and that that's kind of a training issue. All right, so let's go grab a button. We'll drop a button right down here. Now we can use the wizard for this button. All right, we're gonna come down here to Record operations and then add new record. Next, let's put the text in there. I like to use text because again, a lot of people don't know what these, what, the, what does a pencil mean, right? Next, give it a name. We'll just call it the add button, a add BTN and then finish. Now here's your add record button. Okay, save it, close it, open it. And now as you type in, you'll eventually get down to that button. Okay, and then you can push the space bar or the enter key on that button. But like you said, you don't necessarily want to have to tab all the way down to that or grab the mouse. I know me when I'm doing data entry, I don't like to, you know, I'm typing, typing, typing. I don't want to have to stop, grab the mouse, find the button. So we can do two things that will allow us to push this button no matter where we are on the form. The first thing is to use an alt keyboard shortcut. So you go right in front of whatever letter you want to make the shortcut and put an ampersand there. All right, like ampersand A, hit enter. Now you'll see this little underline under that A. Okay, save it, close it, open it. Oh, wrong one. Now you'll see whenever, wherever you are on this form, right, you can press Alt A and it'll push that button. Okay, it'll move you to a blank new record. Now the focus is still on the button. You can see the dots around it. So you got to press tab and that'll move you back up to the first name field. You can type someone else in, blah, 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 blah. Alt A, next record, okay? You want something even simpler than that? Well, we can make that the default button. Every form can have one and only one default button. Open up this guy's properties, double click on it, go to other, and you'll see default and cancel. Default is the button 
that gets pressed whenever you press enter on the form. Okay? Unless you're in a notes field, like a long text field, okay? Then enter gives you a new line. Or if you're on another button, because if you're sitting on another button, it'll push that button. So as long as you're in a regular text field, set default to yes, and now save it, close it, open it, all right? Go to a new record. I could be right in here, type in blah, 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 and press enter, boom, new record. And again, you got to press tab, but then you're right back there on the next record, ready to go. Okay, so you can press Alt A, or now you can press Enter anywhere on that form. There's also a cancel button. Let's say you want to make another button to close the form. All right, design view. Let's set up the button first. So go to buttons, drop it down here. We're going to go to form operations. And by the way, I cover all of these different command button wizards in my beginner course. Well, most of them. Most of them I cover in the beginner course, a couple more in the expert course. Some of them are a little more advanced. But form operations, close form, next. I like text. Stop sign is pretty straightforward. You can use that too. Oh, this used to actually be a little stop sign. They changed that. I forgot about that. Next, close form, next. All right, close button. Now we got to close form. Now we can do the same thing. We could do like Alt F for this one, right? Alt F will now close that form. And you can pick any letter you want in here. Um, only one letter per form, by the way. Okay. And you can also make this the cancel button. So now save it, close it, open it. If I'm sitting here, if I press Alt F, it closes that form. Or if I'm sitting here and I press escape, I'm going to hit escape on my keyboard, closes the form. That's the cancel button. All right, so now you want to, you know, start going to town. You hit Alt A, go to a blank new record, tab up the first name. Oh, look, oh, I got to hit tab. Now I'm going over here, right? Why is that? Well, because I just added this button. So now if I hit add record, the focus is here. If I hit tab, it goes to the next field. Tab again, it goes up top here. Now there's a couple things you can do. You could take both of these buttons out of the tab stop if you want to, which is literally just select both of them find the tab stop property and set that to no. But now you can't tab to that button either, so keep that in mind. Okay, or you can just change the tab order if you want to. And again, I got videos on tab stops and tab orders as well. I'll put a link down below. But what you can also do is if you want to edit the macro in that button, you can make it so that when you click the button, it goes up to the first name field. You want to see how to do that? A little bonus material for you. You ready? We're going to we're going to break past the beginner stuff real quick. We're going to I'm going to show you a little bit of extra stuff. Usually I cover editing macros in my advanced classes, but it's real super simple. Watch this. All right, so when we create a button with the wizard, it creates a macro in the button. And you can see that if you click over here on the event tab, and you'll see embedded macro. Okay? Or you can just right click on this button and go to build event, which is just off the screen here. Let me move that up. Right click and then build event and that'll open up this macro builder. All right, let me maximize this so you can see it's easy. These are easier to work with if you maximize. All right, so there's some stuff in here you don't got to worry about. There's an on error clause. We don't need to worry about that. Then there's go to record. This guy does the work. It goes to a new record. Okay, which is what the button does. Okay, then you got some error handling here. Don't worry about that. Ignore that. Okay, so we're going to go to a new record. And then when we're done going to a new record, we're going to go to a control, right? Text boxes, command buttons, those things are all called controls. So we'll open this up and look for the command, go to control. Okay, now what's the control name? Where do you want to jump to? I'm going to jump to the first name field. So type in first name. And there it is right there. It comes right up for you. First name. Okay, save it. Close it. Now we're back to our form. I'm going to restore that to a normal size form. Let's close the form, save it, open it back up again. And now watch what happens if I hit Alt A. Boom. It goes to the new record and puts the focus on the first name control. And that's just a little teeny, teeny, tiny bit of macro editing. And I cover macros in detail in my advanced classes. You can either use macros or VBA programming or both. I teach them both. I teach my developer classes. I teach VBA programming. I prefer VBA programming myself. It's got a lot more flexibility. 
If you like this stuff, if you like learning with me, I got tons of lessons available. My Access Beginner 1 class is free. It's about four hours long. It teaches you all the basics. All right, and then I got nine levels, 14 hours of additional beginner lessons where we go through things like that command button wizard. All kinds of cool wizards in there. Then after that, we graduate to the expert lessons. I got 32 levels of those. We cover all kinds of stuff, relationships, action queries, you name it. Then the advanced levels cover macros, which is what I showed you a little tiny bit of today. And then my developer lessons, we cover programming, all kinds of advanced developer type stuff. Plus, I got lots of seminars and templates and you name it, all kinds of stuff on my website. Check it out. I'll put links down below for all this stuff. But there you go. That's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, 
there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now, answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.